So, uh, hi everyone. Um, thanks for being here. My name is Misha, and this is one of my co-founders. My name is Ibrahim. And over there, there is one of uh, another co-founder of ours. Hey. This is Sven. Um, he's studying over there because he's taking some pictures and stuff. Yeah, on uh, Wednesday we do have work. <laughs> but but uh, if you have any detailed questions to like uh, operations and stuff, this is the guy to talk to. So uh, if there are questions he can't answer, he might uh, be able to do that. Okay, so I guess we're going to talk a little bit about um, our startup and entrepreneurial journey that we um, that we are actually right now having. Um, and I think the first company we founded was like four years ago or something like this. And uh, we're also happy to talk a little bit about football. Um, and we would like to start by introducing ourselves a little bit. But I think we're going to talk for like 20, maybe 25 minutes or so. And um, then I think it's even better if we do an um, open Q&A, if you have any like, special questions, I think this is even better to answer them directly for you guys. Um, otherwise, we have a lot to talk about. Right. Yeah, I guess we should start. So, our story, the entrepreneurial journey, um, right over there, this is like five years ago, maybe six, um, and that was the time uh, I was working for Meltwater, a very, very successful software as a service company in the marketing space. And that was kind of the beginnings of my working experience after the studies. And uh, that picture actually explains very good what my daily, uh, daily work was about. I was praying for deals coming in, I was praying for things to, to happen, to be successful and stuff like that. And um, afterwards, it was getting really, really better. And then we were having some like workshops, as you can see here. Um, you can also see a picture of this guy with me in our Munich office. Um, we gave some, some sales coaching workshops also. And the last picture, the, the colored one, this is actually in our current office space here in Berlin at uh, the APX office, it's the um, accelerator of Axel Springer and Porsche. And they are hosting us because they are our first investors in street figures. So um, I'm 33 years old. Um, I studied media management in Cologne, Munich. And um, I started working for different companies. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, so maybe you want to say something about yourself. Yeah, um, well I'm 28. I actually started working here in Berlin at Halifresh like five, six years ago, something like that. And uh, I studied at the Lake of Constance at uh, Zeppelin University um, over management and economics. And uh, yeah, I met that crazy guy actually <laughs> Two years ago, in an office uh, next to our actual office, yes. um, because we had the most of the consultancies companies on it ourselves, and uh, we're giving communication and sales workshops. Yes, and we didn't like each other for the first time we started. <laughs> it was like a like we hated each other actually for like twenty four hours. Yeah, but uh, when you have a client and there's another consultant from another company sitting in front of you, it's not um, with <laughs> either you are not making a good job or you just want to challenge your way. Right, so maybe this is a little bit interesting for you guys. So, um, HelloFresh, um, maybe you want to talk about what you did there because I think this is also pretty, uh, pretty exciting um, building a big team, right? Yeah, actually, I started at HelloFresh where there were just the three co founders, including Jessica at that time. And uh, it was uh, in Zabrücker Straße, actually, where the current office is as well. And they were just like three founders that had a design, and then the same thing as in many rocket companies, like 25 interns <laughs> working like 10 to 12 hours a day. And actually, this is how my, um, my journey started. 
and it ended uh, four years later with uh, Sven actually in Cologne, where we have built the whole uh, sales, sales, direct sales team all over the Dutch region with more than 250 people. Um, and this is actually also like where we gain most of our experience from building very fast and growing very fast teams. And yeah, this is going to be some stories we might tell today. Yeah, you, you started as an intern there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes it can be good to start as an intern at, at a company. Yeah, sure. Did, did you <laughs> actually think when you started at Hello Fresh that they will be super big after like five years? Of course, you always uh, believe in dreams, also when you have like uh, two founders and stuff like that. But uh, actually, the IPO story was not so clear in my little childish mind at that time. And, and afterwards, you have been the MD at Vitafy, right? Uh, yeah, I actually went to Vitafy uh, in, in 2016. Because they were also um, they want to also build like offline marketing activities and they want to bring brands into uh, big stores in, in all Germany and uh, of course in the food, food sector offline marketing and the combination of online marketing is uh, not something you could find that much at that time and it was uh, also very wild uh, <laughs> wild journey because we we found it. Um, Many small companies, like also Wild Foods, for example, like Beautify Essentials, and uh, yeah, Green Network. Yeah, and for me, um, it took a little while actually before I went into the startup scene. Um, you might see the BMW um, logo or Rolls Royce or Kepler, like which are big corporate companies. Um, where I tried my best uh, after my studies, and it was really really sad, I think. I mean, there are working thousands of people and you don't know anyone. It's just, you're not you're just a number. People don't even say hi when you enter or get off an elevator. So it was kind of frustrating for me. And then I decided to go on with the startup scene. Um, after that, then the, the first company was Water, and I was a sales consultant and I learned a lot. So um, for Anyone who's thinking that hey, sales is not my cup of tea, I, I can tell you, I, it wasn't mine as well at the beginning. I never thought that I was that I will work in sales um, after my studies, but I did, and I, I learned a lot because I think every good C-level employee of a big company and also of a startup should know how to sell at least an idea. Not maybe a product, but at least an idea. So sales is a really good start. And then there was Benify, which is also one of the fastest growing uh, software as a service companies. They are from uh, Stockholm. I used to live there for like seven months. It's a great city. If uh, you guys haven't been there yet, you should go. Um, definitely, but only in summer, please. <laughs> in winter, it's super cold. Um, yeah, and, and then um, some parts of um, new startups. So, Let's, let's talk about some things that uh, we did in the past when it comes to founding, because I think this is uh, why all of us are here today. Um, and we together um, had the company Salesman. Um, that was a kind of a joint venture of Lead the Deal and the sales coaching program and, and Salesman, because the, the, these were the companies that we have had um, individually when we met at our first time when we hated each other. Um, and basket me is kind of the fashion online shop and now today it's Street Pickers. And Street Pickers is the ultimate soccer training app um, that we are developing right now. And uh, what it will do is it will deliver professional soccer content in video tutorials and training plans to a young target group so that they have more fun while training and that they can visualize their skills and uh, finally track their performance improvements. And this is something that we are really happy about, um, Jeff, that we can do this today. And I think uh, this is also something that we can talk about today, but we don't want to only talk about good, good stuff, because there's so many things that we did wrong in the past. 
and I think some people can, can learn from that as well by not doing the mistakes that we already did, I guess, right? Sure. Okay, maybe something uh, about us personally before, uh, because we're here because of stock, right? So this is actually uh, a picture of my first soccer team. Um, over there, the second, um, this is me. Uh, I started so playing soccer when I was five. Um, I love this game. It's just the best sports in the world. You should do with the glasses. Yeah, with the glasses. Yeah. I look almost the same as that, right? Um, and this? This is actually my team today. And uh, yeah, you won't find me on that picture. Because I dropped out. <laughs> You, were too, too, uh, you have been too good? Well, it, well, you know that story, right? It's always the trainer is always the father of another teammate. Yeah. And then you're not highly motivated enough because you, can, you do not get professional soccer training. And this is also our motivation in the end where we built our current company. But uh, I think we should go a little bit faster and say more about why we're here today. Yes. And, uh, why we believe in soccer, why we believe in culture, and uh, why we believe that good culture can speed up the whole process. Yes, company. definitely, definitely. And actually, to, to, to say something before we go in, soccer was a good training for us, uh, because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a team effort, right, to win a game. And to win in, in the startup scene and to, to be successful as a company, you have to be a good team. And I think, personally, that the Sweet Kickers team is the, the perfect team. And uh, I think that all of us are really, really happy that uh, we work together. So, um, about some challenges. I, I think this, these are challenges that every startup has had in the past. Um, at least these are the challenges that I have had when I was working in, in the first startup um, as an employee. It was uh, always the problems and challenges in every startup that I was working for and always in every startup that I found it myself. So culture, really, really hard to implement in a startup. I mean, the setup of a, of a culture is super important because it should you know, always be fun to go to work, I think, and like these kind of soft skills are really hard to, to, to get into the team, right? Yeah, and it's not all about just drinking beer and having this leisure culture like uh, every startup used to have. It also is a lot about like, I would call it like street credibility or like realness, stuff like that. And we're definitely going to talk about that in depth later. Yeah, for sure. And um, workload was always a big problem because as, as MC just said, they, there were like four people that uh, have a fresh and then like 20 interns. For us, we don't have any interns right now. We're a small team, and there's so many things to do. And this is always hard to kind of, you know, know who is doing what. And in the beginning, everyone is doing everything, and this is not really helping actually. It isn't, and it's definitely always when you leave the office, you have the feeling that the job is still not done. Yeah. So it's also very important to prioritize and. Uh, Yes, to find the perfect role for everyone to go faster, fail, and to stand up again and go faster again. Yeah, definitely. And the, the last problem that was always the same was the financials. Uh, even even harder for the startups that we found ourselves because um, it's always like, okay, how can we pay this external um, supplier? How can we pay ourselves kind of salaries? How can we, you know, improve the the, the product because Everything costs money, right? So uh, we're going to talk about this also. So let's jump in. So um, the current culture we, we developed over the past ten years individually, and also in the companies we founded or even we founded together. So speaking is right now, as an example, is all about trust, collaboration, power, and fun. But I think what is more interesting is uh, what is behind those words. Because in the end, um, we believe that, as an example, trust has also many levels. And of course, it's, it's, it's hard, for example, 
Yeah, we just, as an example, we just onboarded our CTO uh, during the last week. And it's always hard to, to how, how do you find the value in a person when you have, like, for example, uh, the possibility to interview them, like, maybe five hours, maybe ten, or maybe, maybe also hang with them, and then you have to decide of 15 to 20 hours, okay, this is going to be the guy I'm going to build my next company with. So, um, we believe that it's always more than just work. We believe definitely in soul checks. We do ourselves, so we have even crazy interviews. They have nothing to do with work-related stuff, and uh, maybe you it's can always the best part mind. because it's about drinking beer and get to know each other right, on a personal level. So we ask questions like, "What what is your X factor?" Like you know, I I, I for myself, I'm I'm the rock throwing champion of Helsinki because. <laughs> Like I've been there with my former company Benify and we were doing some, some challenges for one day as a cultural workshop and um, I always say these stories. I, I, for example, I also like to jump out of a plane sometimes and like, you know, we are interested in these kind of things. I mean, the, you know, the, the CV, you can see the, the CV on LinkedIn, you can check the PDF document, but what you really want to know is how are you getting along with that person, right? Yeah, and this uh very important when you're on a, on a fast track because then you have to, to look at each other's eyes like on a daily basis and you have to make very fast decisions and, and therefore trust must really be built or you're that kind of person that gives trust from the very beginning and uh, are open enough to uh, feel it. Yeah, definitely. So we call all of this process, we call it soul check for ourselves. So a, a, a process when we hire someone always takes like three, at least three interviews. The, the first interview is always the getting to the person on a like high level and um, talk about a little bit about their like skills that they did. Um, the second interview is always kind of the first soul check that we do. And uh, if, if you can go as an, um, as an applicant, if you can go through these two meetings, you're almost in, but you have to be able to drink beer or gin tonics or something with us. And then we decide. Yeah, this can be really rough. <laughs> yeah, Not on the drinking level, but also on the questions the guy in front of you is asking you, of, you know, within like four to six hours. Okay, but uh, I think we should go a little bit faster and uh, whenever you guys have, have questions or have specific topics you want to discuss, just, just throw them in. Because um, it's hot outside and we guys, we don't want to bore you. But in the end, um, the other points like collaboration and fun and uh, yeah, this, this must come along because yeah, most of the times you, you spend more time working um, when you're building a startup than having your spare time. And uh, when it's not fun, why should you do that, right? You should just stick to your corporate job, earn lots of money, and maybe do not even have the time to, to <laughs> get rid of it. And uh, you can, yeah, make the hustle go away. Yeah, I think what you want to say is that the, the fun part is also work related because for us it's super important to have fun at work and we always say do shit you love because otherwise you cannot work like 14 hours a day. That, that's a bit what I think. Um, Alright. Ah, okay, before I... Yeah, I have to say uh, another thing. We also fail big time uh, with our former company with the recruiting uh, for like two or three times. That was really, really bad because we didn't do our soul check because we were growing too fast and we, we got too many clients at the same time. So what we had to do was we had to um, employ more consultants. So we didn't have time to do the soul check for like three interviews with every each applicant. So what we did was just one interview where we put all of the three interviews into one and that didn't work out quite well, right? No, it didn't. We had to get rid of people like after five to, to eight weeks again and then we had to do the entire process again. So, soul check for us at least is very important and this is also a tip that we can give you. Do the soul check, uh, definitely when you hire someone for the C-level, 
because most of the time you see that it also gets equity parts, and then it's even worse to employ someone who's not very good with touch ratio. Well, um, we believe that, that every company should have like different characters. So, um, character is the right way. <laughs> He's quite a character. So, if you take a look at uh, both of us, we we seem to be like the, the guys who are comfortable with like speaking in public and blah blah blah, but maybe we're not. And maybe that guy is only the hardliner and I miss the emotion. He definitely is the emotional part of us. Right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, in the end, we think um, you need the perfect team to go fast and um, we all think that, that you always need a detail-oriented good, a person that always keeps, keeps, keeps track of all numbers, of course. You always need someone who's very emotional, who's able to, to, um, to be with the team. And, uh, of course he's saying that, right? And you always need the hardliner who's, always, <laughs> who's also making the hard decisions and uh, improve the level of uh, the company in the end, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're talking about workload, right? And I'm always telling people that ask me, like, I, I have an idea, I, I want to start a company, how, how should I do this? And I always tell them, get someone you can work with, you can trust, because for yourself, the chance is pretty hot, high, even higher than if you have a great team, that you fail. Because, you know, we're talking to each other for like 16 or 18 hours a day, even when we don't see each other, we have to, to call ourselves and, you know, get, get decisions done, get, get, get shit done and stuff like that. So, it's always good to have these different roles in, in the company because, you know, me as a hardliner, is I, if I would decide on a on a person that I hire on myself only, I would just fuck things up because you know I'm only almost only interested in the in the hard facts like okay, do you have a good background? Can I trust your your track record? Where did you work? Did you do something that you are going to do in my company before and stuff like that? But this doesn't work out because there are other things that you have to also handle with, right? Yes, of course, like, uh, for example, when you build a tech team very fast, most of the companies, they do not even ask the question, okay, man, what is, like, the, the, the technical stuff you want to develop in, in, in the near future? What, are, what is the kind of stuff you want to learn in the, one, um, in the few next years? In the end, it's, it's all about, okay, what are your capabilities right now, and what I, can I gain from you? But uh, in, in the end, there's more than just a kicker table and three drinks in the office that you want to give uh, from the company side also to the employee. Right. So the different roles are super important. Um, next is the priorities. It's always super hard to, to decide, okay, what do I have to do first? You probably all, all know that. I mean, you have so many tasks on your table. And our suggestion is eat that frog. Definitely in the morning, so do the, do the shitty work before you do the, the easy part because you know you have a lot of problems when you start the day and uh, you should always start with tasks you actually don't want to do. This is at least my, my, my tip that I can give you because otherwise, you know, to, for example today, we, we met at the office at like, I don't know, like 9 o'clock something, 9-ish. Um, we had our first stand-up meeting in the morning, like five minutes, talking about the stuff that we're going to do today. And that there were so many things on the list that I am not able at this moment to actually tick all the boxes because I could have prioritized correctly today. Um, I didn't do the, 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 the shitty parts of the day first, so I have to do it now. And after, after this kind of long day, I actually don't want to do it, but I have to. And I hope the quality will be good enough. Maybe you can, you can say something about this. Yeah, I hope so as well. Maybe <laughs> also that everybody can do the good work. Okay. Um, and then the last part of the big problems are the financials. And this is a topic that is really, you know, destroying you sometimes. Um, with our former company, 
we had that company for a little bit more than a year. Um, in the end, it was quite successful, actually pretty, pretty successful. Um, we were telling our customers how to sell their stuff to their clients. Um, but during the journey, we went bankrupt for like three times almost. Because, you know, you have, there was always the cliff of having a customer that doesn't pay you in the deadline that you actually wrote on the invoice, um, but you're expecting the money for your employees and stuff like that. So it's always about bridging, it's always about bootstrapping. And then there's another part, which is the fundraising part. It, and I mean, it, it is also fun, but it's super hard. And, this guy definitely can tell you a lot about this because he is kind of responsible for the getting money in part. Yeah, the, the most important thing we as sales people learned about fundraising is that fundraising is actually not sales. This is so true. So when you're trying to drive the process while fundraising and you're doing like the, the follow up of the follow up and stuff like that, um, definitely comes the other way around and uh, you, in the end you, you do not want to be there like begging for money and stuff like that and uh, it's definitely not the normal sales process. So um, what we believe is that in, in, in fundraising it's always also very important that you, you try out all the personalities in your team and you bring and every time to the meeting like another guy and sometimes for example fundraising with your CTO can be much easier than going with your, I don't know, head of sales or, or chief marketing officer or whatsoever. And um, I think when you start a journey and uh, you, you want it, you, you see yourself in, in a VC case or you see yourself like building a company, you should be always aware of Okay, I'm really right now the right situation to, to, to start a company from scratch. Or did I already move on to such a level that it's um, that I'm not capable of also like yeah living in dusty situations and, and having no money at all? Because if you're not the if you're not capable of also like like living a few months without any money at all, maybe it's not the right thing to do. Maybe it's not, yeah. I mean, starting up a company is pretty cool because, I mean, you, you, can, you, you can decide on everything for your own company, right? I mean, you, you can ask your team, you can ask your, super, like, not, not the supervisor, but your mentors. Um, we have a lot of mentors, actually, in, in big companies and also in startups, and also mentors out of our own target group when it comes to product. Because, you know, for example, street pickers targets 10 to 20 years old, and I'm 33. He's almost 30. So we are actually not the target group, but we have mentors that are 10 years younger than us. Now we ask them, like, you know, how how are you seeing seeing the, the marketing channel? Should we use Instagram before Facebook, for example? The mentor always can be younger and way older than you, but you always should be open to, to what you need right now. Um, this is also some, something that we have to say when it comes to the financials because advisors or mentors most of the times are for free. They don't need money. You don't have to pay them. You have you, you, you maybe you know buy them like beer or so, or you, you go for dinner or for lunch. But um, in the end, it's it's kind of cost free. So this is also super important. Um, another tip from my side is there is a lot of founders that ask me, okay, what should I do first? Should I plan the idea or should I plan the financials? And I always say, you should be aware of what is your vision for the product? What is your vision for, for, for the idea for the next three years? But I would never personally start a company without doing the financial plan and the business planning before because it's super important, and all the startups that I have seen that didn't do it in that in, in that um, chronology, they failed. But and you know that. Yeah, and in the end, it's all about planning, and always like like, like stick to your milestones. And even if, if if you're talking to to investors without 
having all the mice on Skinhead is always a lot. We call themselves sometimes the half Nelson. So you... This is super nice. Half Nelson is super nice. You want to explain it? You, you can. <laughs> so yeah, you have you, to... You, um, yeah, you create milestones with them to, to find a way to, to pick up the speed and, and, and to get money faster in. And I think, therefore, also like all the things we mentioned about culture are very important as well. So in the end, it's also about trust. It's also about like reaching goals. And uh, without a good planning, you can yeah, forget all about that. Yeah, definitely. So Hopkins is always giving something in advance and then getting something back. So if, if I want to make a deal, uh, and I, I talk to someone and say, like, OK, are you able to buy this? Do you want this? And then the, that person is like, yeah, but the price is too high, for example. My budget is only 1,000 euros, and my product costs like 1,500. And the half Nelson is always, OK, if I go down with the price, are you going to really come in with the product and, and, and buy it? Buy my my product, my service. So this is always always very interesting, also for companies yeah. that we have seen. At least. Okay, cool. So uh, maybe we're gonna just flip through the next like uh, ten slides just very 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 quick, quickly because this is the culture that we built in our own team, and uh, it, it's probably enough if we only tell you like one or two sentences about. The different things, and then we should uh, stop at the grenade if you have any interesting questions. So, first, it's use your brains. Um, very important. I mean, you, you might smile about it, but I have seen so many people that just go to work from 9 to 5 and don't use their brains. They just kind of like, you know, work, working stuff uh, and not even thinking about the vision. I think this is super stupid, and this is why we, it sounds super easy, but have this as our company culture as well. So use your brand. Kato Krab, he should do this because I sometimes have problems doing this. Kato Krab, yeah, like, don't care about the bullshit. Like, uh, sometimes it's. You're, you're sitting in a room with like three people, and, and uh, people start just. Uh, Start making ideas about how the process should go, and, and, and you just waste your time talking about stuff. But in the end, like 80% would totally do it, and people are just not able to cut the crap or cut the bullshit or whatever. Okay. So, cut the crap, and let's go to the next slide. <laughs> the receiver rules. Um, we have had so, like, this is a really good point here. We have had so many problems in the beginning uh, working together finding our communication, you know, um, because we talk very differently sometimes. Uh, yeah, and if you want to really bring, like, four people into a team, which, like, have somehow all the kind of personalities you want to have in a team, maybe they cannot communicate with, uh, with each other from the very beginning. Yeah. And then you need some rules so that in the end uh, communication goes well. And I think the receiver rule is a, a very good thing. Because in the end, if, if I'm talking to Misha and he's not getting it all what I'm trying I'm to tell him. just not getting it. And he's not on the emotional level because he has no feelings at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not receive my messages. Maybe I need to change my way of communication. Yes. So, so this is like what we, what we develop for ourselves. When, when he's giving me the task, I'm always repeating in my own words what, what he wants from me because most of the times when he's trying to tell me something, I just don't get it. So it's the receiver world. I have to understand it because I am doing the task. Right? Yeah. Getting it right. You know, the, the thing is, you always should be aware of the task. So the receiver rule, and you only can get things right if you got the, the task right. So what this means is don't 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 always go for the hundred and ten percent as he said before. Like it, it's a mix of cutting the crap and the receiver rule. You you can stop by eight percent because most of the time it's gonna be enough. Agree okay. the standards. Um, so for example. When we have like 
a special group of people. They are always like the business department, and they are they're very good and going very fast. Things are getting sometimes very steamy and very loud. So you need sometimes rules that stick to situations like that. So that from that some someone's in the room that understands okay, the situation right now is bringing us nowhere. So that you have somehow a code word. As another example, we sometimes have this that. Is so funny. <laughs> we sometimes have that when we uh, also hang out in, 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 in private life, that we just have this word like squirrel. We need that. We really need this. When we talk too much about business, as an example, and we have friends and family around. So when anyone says squirrel, okay, we just cut the crap, cut the bullshit. And we work the stand. Yeah, we the stand and we do not talk about business. So, if you got it short, this is also a, a, a good thing because, you know, we had a lot of problems in the beginning because, again, with the working culture, um, when I get a task from someone or when I give a task to someone, it's super important that when you finish this, you're also showing it because I don't know when he finished some stuff, right? We have deadlines and then we're going to talk about it, but when you, when you finish two days before, then, then I should know because then we can focus on, on a different thing. All of these rules that you have seen now are looking pretty, pretty easy, I guess, but um, most of the companies that we have seen in the past don't do it like this. So we actually have these things in our office, like hanging on the wall. Yeah. And it's the same like the, the bell. I don't know, like Amazon and all the other companies are using it or, or used to use it. Yeah. Lots of people, they sometimes give up the feelings as sales coaches, okay, but this ringing the bell this is so steady and stuff like that. But in the end, if, if guys that do a good job at the office or if someone like finishes a process, uh, um, a project in a very nice way, why don't you celebrate with these people and why do, don't they have the possibility even if they are shy to 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 give what they learned on their way and to share to share their learnings to the others, because in the end, every company should have like a blah 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 university, so that you have like an open culture where you have like open lectures and people learn from each other, and uh, yeah, where people can show it and they got it. This is also why we're here today. We we like these events to to show how we. I know. And got things done. So tools and methods. This is a good bridge that we have had this before. And everything we do, we we track uh, because what you can track, you can measure, um, and you can get better. We are using, for example, for project management, we are using Trello, for example. This is not advertising, but for us, it's the best tool because you know it's super easy to have like sprints, for example. We have different stages. We have an idea stage, and from the idea stage it goes to the current sprint, from the current sprint it goes to, you know, the daily tasks, and from, the, from these things it goes to done. So everyone knows exactly when something has to be finished and when something is done, and all the, um, all, all the, for example, you know, uh, Google Sheets or something like this, for everything that we need, we always create a template, which is empty, so that we have it for the next time. Yeah, no IT. I think you should talk about this. No IT? I think it's like in football, because like um, many people don't like Cristiano Ronaldo. I do. <laughs> because <laughs> we sometimes have the feeling that that guy is rather taking the risk instead of uh, making the right pass. And I think how it is in football, it's also like, like uh, yeah, in a team and also like in, in your day to day like business life. Because it's it's not about the eye. If if there's someone else in the team who can do that job better, he or she should definitely do it. Because um, in the end, not you as a person win. In the end, uh, you win as a team. Yes, and then it's transparency and current uh, communication. Um, this comes back to the trust and collaboration part because it's for us it's super important to always be honest with ourselves. Uh, and not only on the sea level, but also to every employee that we have, because you know, it, if trust is broken once, it's super hard to, to get it back. This is also a very very big learning that we did in the past, because you know we lost some people that we didn't want to lose because of these things. I mean, 
it, 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 seriously, it starts, we were talking about this today, actually. We, we are hiring right now, and uh, like two new people in, in product management start next week. And we were talking about things like, you know, should we actually give them access to our calendars, you know, so that they know when we are available. And we were like, okay, should they actually know what, what we want to discuss in these different individual meetings? Or should we just show them that we are blocked and that they that we don't have time to talk to these guys? And we were like, no, I mean trust and collaboration are our core values for the culture, so we are like everyone should should be able to see everything. It goes to the certain amount of people in the company, of course, obviously, but in the startup, in my opinion, sharing is caring and it's everything in the beginning at least. Yeah, and I also have the feeling that Every time you're working like for big companies and, and, and decisions are just made so fast and especially in sales when you when you uh, you try to sell that kind of product, then one week later it's that kind of product and you're running in that direction, you're running in another direction, and you do not understand what um, is the, the core value or what is the purpose, um, I think it's really hard um, to go fast and to, to build great companies if you have no clue how decisions are made and why maybe there's a change in, in, in goals and vision. Right. And then the last part, and then we kind of finish and uh, open for another question of yours hopefully, um, it's care. So I just said caring is caring, and this is actually closing all of the 10 rules of lean management that we did for ourselves. We're not just co-founders, um, we're kind of family, you know, I mean, for us it's super important because like, we, we develop a friendship, we're, we're, we're sharing like 15, 16, 17, 18 uh, hours a day with each other, and then it's even more important to, to be, you know, to, to, to take a look at each other and to, to care. So. He's the emotional guy, for me it's a little bit harder than for him, but you know, when, when I see him in the morning and he has a bit sad face or something, I'm asking him like, what, what, what happened this morning, what happened last night? He can do these things way better than I can, but this is again team, right? You know, you have you have someone that is an emotional person in your team, and you also have someone who is detail oriented like Sven, you know, wants to know everything for like all the nitty gritty stuff. Like, yeah, but what can you say? I'm, I'm more interested in other stuff than in these kind of things. Yeah. 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 Only care. So these, these are general rules of success.